Live from the NAL headquarters in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we welcome you back to kick off weekend of the 2024 North American League season. Bit of a false start yesterday, but we're not worried about any penalties. Today, we'll be off and away as if nothing ever happened. I'm Caliber Jacob Anderson. He is former world champion Gabriel Axing Miralez, and he is recent retiree Davide Foxy Bucci, which I don't say is a dig, by the way. I say that as like a celebration. Oh, he's like, old. Like, congratulations. Old you had a good career, and now you get to lounge back and relax like the rest of us. No, I know. I have like the perfect story path, you know, pro player. Now I'm on the desk. So I feel like that I'm exactly where I'd want to be, no? Absolutely. How is retirement treating you so far? It, it, it's been longer than just your announcement. You you, you kind of knew a couple months ago. Yeah, right? around uh, around Atlanta time is definitely when I knew. Took a little bit of time, but I mean, it's good. I mean, I, I tried to get rid of Lax and somehow we just found our way back to each other, you know, on the desk. So. <laughs> Just like tied. Well, you, tied successful, like you successfully got rid of me, but then, <laughs> but then we came back. I mean, just the, the planets aligned again, and we're here together. Lax, what was it like for you? Like how getting dropped? Horrible. No, 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 <laughs> not getting dropped. Like in the the six months following your retirement, like how was that period of like, oh my god, like I I did everything in my career I could do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was bittersweet because it was like, okay, I'm done competing because I love competing, but then. During that off time, I was kind of going stir crazy. I was like, now what do I do? I've had this schedule for the past eight years of what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I was like, well, now, now what am I doing? And then got the call to go do Copenhagen. And then it's, you know, keep snowballing from here. And now I'm on a desk back with you yeah. and it's, it's great and back with you it, it, it's it's amazing did it's you amazing see he meant it more for me okay yeah, just yeah I mean, fine whatever did you see how much fun he was having in retirement and was like damn i want to do that that sounds like fun like yeah i mean i did a little bit of analysting back in 2018 so i knew yeah. like i had the capabilities to to do that if the opportunity presents itself and it did at perfect time so i'm so grateful for that you know it's thank crazy you. how we get this specific duo that everybody loved back in the olden days still love them. still together still love you guys and we're still doing it on the desk let's talk about about what today is in store because again yesterday we were supposed to have some matchups didn't even get the chance to play one of them before the servers decided they weren't going to agree with us today luckily they do knock on wood i just hit my desk just to make sure that, that actually is confirmed we have m80 and wildcard starting us off Los and R OXG in Los's debut later on. We have a game of two rebuilds in game four, which is Beast Coast versus Mirage. I think every game on this slate, even if it isn't what was supposed to be the debut, is still going to make for a pretty good day one. I mean, I'm extremely excited for today. I mean, me and Fox have talked about it a little bit is this day particularly, every team, I think I would say that these are really good matchups to really start out the stage since we didn't get to start out yesterday how we wanted. So these matches alone, I think, are going to be some exhilarating matches throughout. Yeah, it's a perfect situation. Even though we didn't get to see the great games that we had yesterday, this is a perfect limit test for all of the matchups. I feel like every team is very close in play style or in regards. And so the fact that we're able to see them today as the first actual match, I mean, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about the, the Los Oxy game. Not just say that jacket's fire. Thank you. Yeah, look at that thing. It's a pretty sick jacket. Thank we, you. you. You guys know how to style a little bit more than me, so I had to find a way to like spruce things up a little bit. I don't know. I might be behind on your game. Just I mean, I'm wearing the bit. same jacket that I wore yesterday. I didn't, I didn't get to show it off. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, you hold your outfit that you can use for later. Let's start with our very first game of today, which is the actual now debut matchup of the 2024 season, Wild Card against M80. One team was very close to qualifying for a major, and the other one went to every major last year and the Invitational and really wasn't able to make the most of that opportunity so instead they come into 2024 both of them make some changes some minor some drastic and now they're hoping to turn over a new leaf with this matchup here this one is the actual first match of the nal and i think it's a really really good one i mean, i agree i agree i think it's a really good one i feel like the best things to look at for both of these teams is the way that i wouldn't necessarily call wildcard a full rebuild but i feel like this is the first time since this last year that they've been able to get a lot of pieces to the puzzle and i feel like both teams have been struggling to find that throughout the year yeah and i think you even just touching up a wild card i mean even looking over at m80 seeing cameraman now on that roster i mean i said this in a tweet when cameraman first got announced is this is the igl that i feel will really push m80 into a higher status internationally i think they'll still do good internally but internationally i think cameraman will be the one that will set those expectations and those ex expectations will be met it's also just really weird seeing him on an NA team. I think the the, the big thing is so weird. we were looking for like well, what this MA team was gonna look like. It's still got a bunch of Brazilians on it, but cameraman NA? Like, well, that's interesting you say that because cameraman could have been in NA, 
during the reciprocity days, specifically after Tokoname. Really? Yeah, yeah. We uh, After Tokoname, we were looking at maybe getting some imports from Brazil mm -hmm. on our team. And he was actually, because of Lax, he was the first one that we went to approach to, saying like, hey, do you want to come wow. to North America? But back then, things didn't necessarily line up as they did Visas didn't line up. There was a lot of things. So yeah. it, it didn't work. But there there could have been a scenario where it could have been cameraman.rec. So it's only four years later that he finally finds himself crossing over yes. into a different region and actually doing it for the first time. That's crazy. Hey, what could have been? Also, rest in peace, Reciprocity. Forever. Yeah. Still well, one of those brands. That, that really was everyone's favorite roster. Had. I don't care what anyone says. That was everyone's favorite roster. Everybody in your family loved Reciprocity more than anybody else back in the day. You're 100% right. Thanks. Let's talk M80 as the very first team we need to go over because not only did they go to every event last year or the previous calendar year, they decided it wasn't good enough and blew up almost the whole roster to give us what we have today. They have abandoned the Americans and they've brought in the Brits. This is a very different lineup to what we thought we'd get in the NAL. It, yeah, I mean, it, it's very different. I tell you exactly why, just because I'm so happy that this is the changes that they went for, because it's the first time that it feels like M80's prioritizing the supports. They're prioritizing the back line. They didn't necessarily have an issue with slaying power. They didn't have an issue with IGLing. I feel like there was just no glue. And so when you look at all of the players that they've just recently got, those players, Citizen, I feel like in this last year was the glue for Sonics. Noodle was the glue for GK. Cameraman was the glue for Los, and now yeah. you have so many st players. It's a sticky situation now on M80. <laughs> so in my opinion, I feel like they have so many players that bounce off of each other, and I want to use the word selfless because they're so selfless with the way they play around each other instead of just trying to build like a super team on M80. I mean, and that's what we've known M80 to be is a super team. We've seen it throughout that this was the super team, this was the super team. But just because you get five really well established players does not mean that that's going to be the super team as we saw given that they look good in nal but then you'd see them internationally kind of look like an apec team they immediately were sent oh. home they were near airport new arrivals whatever that looks like it just what it didn't look great you said the s word man you said that word and now all of a sudden there's a possibility that maybe they don't actually go and do anything in this calendar uh, no I, no I, I don't think nah. so because lax wasn't trying to say that they go for a super team but i but they are drifting away from it because this isn't just five players that are all just statistics, people going for the kills. Absolutely. We bring, I brought up the word selfless. I really think when you look at these players, especially when you look at Kino and Cameraman specifically, it's the first time where you actually have players that you would trust, or at least that I would think the team would trust on droning and being able to get their entries into these difficult spots. Whereas before it was kind of, anybody's ball game whoever gets the kill gets the kill everyone's on their own so looks a little more structured now and you also saw i mean it was a top 14 finish it was a top 16 finish it was grouped i mean yeah it's not to say that those five players that were on those rosters were bad by any means they're statistically that roster was disgusting but what we were seeing was not that same that same outcome which you know that's why this roster change happened and like fox said like this is a roster that i truly do believe has every piece of the puzzle Let's talk about who is probably one of the bigger pieces of that puzzle. A guy who was third rated overall at the most recent Six Invitational. Citizen was given a chance to join this team. He took this chance over sticking with Sonics. How big of a pickup is this for M80? I mean, Citizen is nasty. We all know it. EU knows it. NA knows it. It's the reason why he came over here. Sonics knew it. I mean, Citizen is a tremendous player. Just recently at SI, I don't want to say he carried SQ, but he carried SQ. He Before <laughs> going into that upper final match versus FaZe, he was the number one rated player at the event. And on top of it, he was like top three in all four or five of those categories. That alone, I mean, Citizen in this day, this day and age and how people talk, Citizen's him. He is him. <laughs> I mean, he is him, and especially the amount- He's him, look, he's right oh, he's there. Right there. <laughs> he's chewing on his fingers. I mean, <laughs> he's definitely improved. Thank you for the play-by-play -play of what he's doing right he's now. He's definitely improved a lot, especially with the way that he's evolved as a player from coming to North America and then just being a part of Sonics. And I feel like M80 is getting him at his perfect moment because mm -hmm. when they brought Ambi to Sonics, I feel like Citizen took a little bit of a backseat to be able to cultivate the player. And now he understands how to be a leader as well as a strong, capable player that we know him to be. Give him uh, or give me some background on one of the guys he's going to be teaming with probably the only real piece that played every event from last year was Spoit, and he went to every event with with the team even if they didn't do anything really notable internationally so why is he notable right now 
Well, the other European guy that they brought on, I mean, he's the most notable just because when they first got him, right, for Copenhagen in that NAL season, he was phenomenal. He was absolutely devastating. He was pretty much, I wouldn't say carrying the team, but he came in right after of a hot win from coming from Europe. Everyone expected him to do good and he performed. And then they went to the event and it didn't necessarily pan out the way they wanted it to. But if you look at his statistics and the way that he's been performing throughout the year, the stats aren't really changing. He's still successfully finding those kills and being a pivotal role, a pivotal slayer for the rest of M80. And so, like we mentioned, it's not a slaying issue and it's not a late round goal IGLing issue. It's just about who's going to play for Spoit's trade. Who is Spoit going to play off of the trade? And I think now they finally have a full team to be able to do that behind him. And let's go and talk about their opponents because everything about Spoit and the new M80 squad will be tested up against a team that has had a lot more time to figure things out because they only made one roster move in the offseason. Wild card decided tryouts really aren't it. Let's go with the team that's already established. Grab the guys who played for Mirage last year and added another world champion to their roster. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for this roster. Obviously, bringing back Bosco and a historical GOAT. Boss GOAT is what we know him as. I team with Bosco. I won a world championship with Bosco, the first one ever on the Xbox. And now he's playing with a former teammate of Rampy. They also won a world championship together. And the one thing that I really love about this new team is bringing Bosco really allows both Rampy, Vertical, even Kanzen to allow them to really flourish in those areas. And they have a strong back line of Bosco and Spiker that can really allow those layers and the in-depth gameplay to just really flourish with this team where they didn't really have that with Slothy going into last stage. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people immediately think that adding a two-time world champion to a team is just going to be great full stop, no matter what. But let's specifically hear what Rampy had to say about how this team is going to function coming into stage one. Hi, uh, this is Rampy and I, I play for Wildcard Gaming. I will say I, I love my team. I love everyone I play with. Uh, this is this was a team that I really wanted to play with. I when we announced our free agent roster, I was just hoping that this could happen because I think we're gonna shock NA with how good this team will be, and with what we want to accomplish. I'm I'm just very confident. But I would say it's very off awesome for me to play with Vertical. Um, I've been competing against him since. This is when I joined Pro League and he was playing Pro League already at that point. I was watching him when he was on, um, I think it was Rise Nation. I really enjoy hanging out with Vert and playing with him and not against him anymore. I'm tired of dying to the reflex. I think a great first step with us was getting Meepy. Uh, we needed a head coach that knew what he was actually talking about and um, understands the game at a high level. And that I can say about Meepy 100%. And get, he's, he's been helping us get on the same page since the start. I, it's, been, it's been great so far and I'm excited that we'll be able to show like how good we're gonna be uh, for this season and prove everyone wrong. And I think or for us, it's about getting respect back for players on this roster. So I'm excited to do that. A lot of teams over the offseason decided the best course of action was to blow everything up from the inside and start fresh. But even though Wildcard did not qualify for the Atlanta Major at the very, very end of Stage 2, they decided to keep the core together, only made one roster change, another coming in, hopefully stronger than they've ever been before. I mean, it sure looks like it. The way that they've been able to round off their team since getting Bosco, especially not to say that Slothy played bad, but obviously he was a younger player when it came to the scene, whereas Bosco, I mean, Bosco's been around for a while, and Absolutely. obviously he's able to fully cap off that team. Well, let's just give Bosco his props real quick because it's been a minute since he's actually played a match. The last time he played was the Six Invitational 2020. Yeah! It's been almost 400 days since the legend has dropped into the server, so hopefully he doesn't have too much rust, right? Hopefully? Dude, I retired and I took like an eight month break off and I came back playing ranked and I was horrible. I was washed. So uh, four, almost 400 days is insane to me. It's a big distance, but I mean, he has been grinding for a little bit. We almost had a chance, an opportunity to see him play in last year's E2, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, fortunately for him, he was able to join the current roster that he joined now and be able to progress a little bit more. So he's been playing for about 
three, four months now, so I'd hope that the rust has shaken off at this point. Here's the main reason why he's added onto the squad. They came so close to making Atlanta. All they had to do was knock off Space Station on map three of the grand final of the LCQ, and they would have been going to the major. They are on, or they were on the cusp, and all they had to do was get one more game, and suddenly they're going to a home crowd. Well, that's one of the things that I love that Rampy gave credit to was Meepy coming on and helping this roster because, sure, they didn't have the greatest start to the league and coming in seventh, but once they reached those qualifiers and those LCQ specifically, that's when we really saw that glimpse of Mirage, now wildcard. We saw that team and what it could be, and they were literally one game away from going to Atlanta and just couldn't best SSG, but now they have had five to six months off bringing in Bosco to really set the foundation and get off running. They're looking like a beautiful team. And a couple of guys who were standouts from that LCQ performance, we need to talk about them here just to remind everybody exactly how close they were. Rampy Spiker and Kanzen were a couple of those spearheads from that LCQ run got them so close. But how exactly is this squad going to function now? Is Bosco in? Is he going to play support? And maybe we move Spiker to something different? Does Rampy come in and play entry? Does he? Like, what specifically is this team going to look like, Fox? I mean, there's no way you pick up Bosco and you don't have him on smoke. I'd assume that he'd obviously tr favor the more supportive roles. It takes a little bit of time for him him to get used to it's also a less game oriented role he's able to focus on what he knows best and what he was able to be successful in ssg and it's so easy to work around the rest of these guys because cans and we saw him play support on sonics now he's playing a little bit more of a flexible role spiker we can see him flex especially when you had a chance mm -hmm. to play with him on pb and especially rampy i think rampy is such a phenomenal player with his selflessness, the way that he's able to just play whatever operator, whatever the team needs. A lot of people revere to him as one of those players that can just mold to any situation. He specializes in everything. You know, you may have a player that's really good at just one operator. Yeah. Rampy's good at everything, every position. He tries to just fit to what the team needs. Absolutely. And looking at Spike, I mean, this is the person that I want to talk about specifically because he was a former teammate back on Parabellum. He's an up-and-comer. He was became an IGL for us yeah. and for me and Skies. I mean, the biggest thing about Spiker now having a player like Bosco that has this experience, has that support role. Spiker's on the team of legends, dude. Yeah, he can learn a lot from these guys, but specifically Bosco on how to really anchor a site, really how to play more passive and just get a general read in the game. So seeing this team now and just possibly learning from Bosco, I can only see Spiker's skill ceiling excel even higher than what it's currently been. Well, let's see if that's what Meepy has done at the band phase to see if he can't give the whole team a chance to flourish as much as possible. Gentlemen, we're going to Chalet for game one. What do we think about that pick? Uh, I think, you know, M80 is a very aggressive team. They love the more aggressive maps, especially with the roster that they have now with Spoit, Noodle, Citizen being able to be droned in, entried in. I feel like this is a map that prioritizes that, mm -hmm. having a guy with a drone behind him. I mean, obviously, you could argue that for every map, but Chalet specifically. And so when it comes to a map like that, I mean, I feel like the aggressive style is better, whereas Wildcard, in my opinion, they look a little bit more supportive based off the player's play style. Yeah, and I'll support Wildcard here with this map specifically. I mean, like I was talking about the early, talking about what Bosco can bring to the team and Spiker as well, is they allow that that layer, that defensive backing, where players like Rampy, players like Kans, and players like Vert can get aggressive and fall back to a strong back line. Is that going to be your prediction then? We have the brand new North American League Predictions Championship, and this is the first official game that will determine who walks away with this belt at the end of the stage. Jesse already has gone for wildcard in this matchup, so are you sticking with wildcard? Which, so way, which way I, do you I swing? Just, I just had to, you know, give people a little bit of context, but I am, I am going with M80 for this map specifically. Wow. I'm, I'm sorry. Wow. I, 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 I'm sorry. You're going with M80? I'm going with That's M80. That's sickening. I'm going to go with M80. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if man. it was a different map, then, like like Fox said, like this is an aggressive map, so I can see why like Fox even leans towards M80, and that's kind of where I'm going, is it does really sure. those aggressive But you're, play you're going playstyle and not the fact that Wildcard have been together for longer and thinking that maybe that gives them an advantage. You don't think that matters, you're just thinking playstyle. Honestly, I'm really just looking out for myself here in the predictions. Like, <laughs> I need that belt. So. We need Jesse to go down. I mean, Wildcard just has slower paced players. When it comes to a map like Chalet, I'm going to favor M80 because they have the more aggressive style. I agree. All right. I guess that's kind of all there is to be said. Jesse, the guys are ganging up on you over here. Please get over here so you can actually assert your dominance at some point. It's time for us to get started in just a second.
this game has what well, we, we were hoping and hoping that we'd be able to see those games played yesterday and we thought hey sonic's Lowe's is going to be the first one that we end up seeing we're going to introduce the brazilians first but instead of seeing an all brazilian team come in we're seeing a team that doesn't have any na born players on it because kino wasn't born here he was born in brazil everyone else was either born in what sweden the uk or brazil and none of them were actually born in NA. So we're still having an imports roster kick off our stage. It's just not Lowe's this time around. No, it's not. But, I mean, the fa the faces that are on these teams, we are already well aware of what they're capable of, who they are, the status that they have in Siege. So, sure, it's not NA players, but NA isn't even the best region right now, statistically speaking, just based off these events. So, if anything, we're doing it right now by getting imported players. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy, especially for Noodle, too, because I feel like he's just had the transition of just different region after different region. I was going to say. And so, from going from a team like GK, obviously, to now coming to North America, he showed so much promise, especially on that roster. Yeah. Taking on the IGLing as your main entry, Yeah. that's such a difficult task. And now to be able to see him on a team with Cameraman, he doesn't necessarily need to IGL as much. He can give a lot of the flexibility, a lot of the difficult calls to Cameraman and just focus on being the entry i mean i'm pretty sure noodle's only like 20. he's still young he's 19. 19 or 20. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I don't know. He looks i'm 19. pretty sure he's 20. i've talked to him about it before but <laughs> you know i thought you had some information on me i was like oh, i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. He has a look with Peter. i'm up. old i just know that i'm older than everyone at this point so alfama has the mr worldwide reference for him because he, he went to several different regions back in the old days he was on the old eu core he went to fanatic and apac noodle has also now gone to three separate regions i think are they tied in the amount of different regions they've been to mm. I, I'm, I don't know if anyone's been to more than three at this point i think the max is three yeah i think i think you're right i think the max is three so yeah. if it doesn't work out on m80 noodle you could always <laughs> apac <laughs> apac or brazil the options are the last two and open especially where imports are concerned we'll be right back with game number one after a very short break remember the road to the manchester major starts in just a minute we'll be right back Ladies and gentlemen, we are so back. I, I'm not gonna lie, Sam, we went to that break, I started getting nervous. I started like, no, not again, not again. But we do have the debut game for you, my friend, the official debut game. Sam, M80 versus Wildcard. We've actually got something to look at. Yeah, no, I'm very, very excited. You know, it's back, your hair's not back though. I don't know what the hell happened to well, that. Well, my but... hair was here, it's gone now. I. What? Did you lose another bet? Like what? what no, what's going on? I I went to the I went to the barber and I said, look, I want to you know I want a haircut similar to what I had, and then she did it and I didn't like it, so I was like, well, when Liam buzzed my head in Atlanta, it ended up okay, so we'll just do it again. So I got it, you know, three on the top, two three fade on the sides, and we're okay. Mm. See, this this fucks, this is why you don't go to great clips. All right, M80 versus Wild Card, guys. We got a banger to start off the day with some new rosters that Carter and I will get into. He's chomping at the bit, folks. I was talking Damn. to him in our little Discord green room about these things, but I was like, hey, let's just save this for broadcast. So let's start off with the elephant in the room. M80, they've picked up so many people, and they're about to debut this roster here on Chalet, Carter. They picked up so many people, and one of them is just picking Kino back up. Like, technically, it's not a... Technically, depending on your start date, it's not a roster change because he was on the roster in Atlanta, but then not on SI, where they picked up three people. And if you brought in your definition, they picked up more. It is a complete rebuild. And with the importing, as we've talked about, they get one of the best players from the Sonics. They get one of the most famous IGLs from Brazil. And they're going against Sam, the Rainbow Six equivalent of the 2022 Super Bowl halftime show. We got Randy. <laughs> we got Bosco. We got Vertical. This is the Siege team for NA old heads. Absolutely. You know, if, if you woke up Stokes from 2020 in, in just a, a stupor of some sort, and you're like, Samuel, this is a roster coming up for the next year. I would absolutely just be over the moon. You know, this is a, a dream roster, as you said, for old heads of Rainbow Six Siege. But how are they going to apply themselves to the modern day? Now, I will say this. We just had a recent very large patch, especially for you 1.5 users out there, or some of the people that adopted Siege once the 1.5 came into play. So you don't even know a different history. Uh, there is a little bit of a balancing that's taken place here. So now we only have access to the 2.5. A lot of our old heads say wildcard might be able to use these things to their advantage. I was about to say, some, some of these players, the prime of their career might have been before the 1.5 even gained dominance. So they're like, I've been, I've been here for years. 
We're back to like Zoe Cog, R4C A Cog. It doesn't matter for vertical, he's just gonna use the reflex and everything as he always does. But for some of the people who are interested in that sort of thing, yes, it could make a big change. And Wildcard find themselves right at home. But we'll move on to Chalet, a map that M80's previous roster uh, did not have a great record on, but that's why they very smartly brought in some changes. And we'll see how this new roster debuts. I'm kind of of a similar mindset to the desk. I think this map, which tends to be a little more aggressive, but also for a player like Citizen, who likes his cutoff, who likes his flanks watched, somebody who is a bit more of that baity play style, waiting for the defense to make a move and cutting them off, I think he has a lot of good angles at his disposal on Chile, but also players like Noodle, like Boyd, if they've got drones in front of them, this is a map where they can really make the end. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I'm most excited about here for M80. You know, they are a firecracker, but also not only by the name of the team, also with the team in general. Their ability to find kills with this roster, at least in a vacuum, right? You look at these names, very, very powerful things to come, hopefully, M80 in the future. Now we're into round one, though, here between M80 and Wildcard. Let's get into it, folks, as M80 will be donning things for the very first time. It's going to be Noodle into the basement as he'll be making his opening round here in North America. Very excited to have Noodle on board here in NA as he's been running the muck of things over the last year, I'd say, on Rainbow Six CG Sports as a whole. He's been one of my favorite players to watch when he was on that GK roster. I mean, just a standout performance. Obviously, trying to sort of rebuild his reputation after not having a great stint on Heroic during SI or Koi there afterwards. Really putting up a solid performance on the Meta Darlings from the Atlanta Major. Obviously not having a great time at SI, but here in NA, we'll try to make things a little bit different. M80, at least at the start, are not trying to change things up all too much. They've secured fireplace control. Started getting a bit of that entry point on the middle floor while also looking to clear out the top as, well, they found an Azami who is laser focused on a floor hole. But fortunately for them, no real ability to counter right now. They'll have to open up that office wall if they want a chance and not only taking down this Azami, but also cracking this top floor extension. That's going to be the next step of this plan. The you know, right hand side broken up just for some angle work there from wild card side. So, citizen's gonna have to be wary of that. Could also have some impacts come out of Spiker, does still have one of those. A smoke out for Kino, already trying to pull out some cheese here with this glass. So, work his way inside, able to find one, but immediately traded out here by Rampy with that cog on the ump. Able to take him down and at least make a serviceable position for wild card. Although, M80 do have some hot guns, they're hot to trot here with a kill on Spiker. Still seeing that castle with the ACOG, it's like whiplash. It's like, what? He's got it? <laughs> indeed, indeed, he does. One of the uh, few members of the defense who have that ACOG back. Doc and Rook as well, but I'm sure we'll see some of that at some point in the NAL. 3v3 now, as MB have successfully, with a bit of an asterisk there, cleared out that top floor extension. It's come at the cost of, obviously, Kino and Spoit. And with that glass gone, if you were hoping to use those smokes to get a dining plant or make it a lot easier, that's going to be a bit more of a problem. But they have these vertical angles, and they've pushed everyone on the defense back to solar stairs. So the possibility of a retail is not particularly high. The angles at M80's disposal, while they don't have the glass, they can cover anybody pushing aggressively inside the site. So long as Vertical doesn't get a successful retake, the game might have very well gone M80's way. All Vertical gets is one. One singular kill by the solar side. Rampy on low HP should be easy pickings for any one of these M80 attackers, unless he's in a spot that's gone unnoticed. Frost Trap certainly not noticed. Might just be the end of M80's first round against Wildcard. And indeed it is. Camran might get back up, but M80 are down and out in round one. Very, very close engagements all the way through. Pinch me, I must be dreaming. It's Rampy and Bosco in a clutch moment on site there. If you can even call it that, honestly, they really had the driver's seat there for the majority of the time. I really enjoy the things that happened for Wildcard on that top for able to delay things out a while. Make things complicated for M80, especially with the pickups that they were able to find as they cleared out that top floor. But nevertheless, still, I'm those two SSG players from way back in the day here on Wildcard and getting things done there in the crunch time. Always good to see. So very well done to Wildcard as they'll be able to pick up the very first round. M80, honestly, all things considered, not the worst ideas of how to be able to treat that. I especially love how they had things set up initially to take control of that top floor, make sure to have that angle out there from the balcony. But once Wildcard was able to get those picks, Carter, able to roll things back over towards the Solarium side, keep M80 on pace to just have things be on bad timing when it came down to their execution. So really like what we saw in a wild card there. 
And I think that's it at least indicates something that might be one of the big strengths of Wildcard that Gabe and Fox talked about is with the introduction of Bato, you have that, of course, very strong back line. But something that Wildcard do have, you know, if we have questions about how well can they hang in this aggressive meta in this E2 W7M style of play we've seen over the past year, but one of the best ways you can still counter that is having really solid crossfires, playing off each other's contact, holding each other's angles. And that's something that Back when the game was a lot slower, when Bosco and Rampy were in their prime, that was something that was really valued. So if they can still hold that and do it on Chalet, and maybe might have a very difficult time. Sam, we got our first Deimos in the North American League. <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. You, now, to, here's the thing. Do you, do you want my competitive opinion, or do you want my what do I think about it for the game opinion? Like, what, uh, what are we going with here? Round two of Chalet in a group stage game. I think a vibe opinion is warranted here. Honestly, I honestly don't think he's all that great. Only because he requires a high amount of coordination. I think when it comes to competitive play, he'll definitely be a solid option. But the big thing is now is that if you want to get information on someone, you have to scan them. So that means you have to try and risk some drones in a, you know, area where somebody like Solus can be. You can see M80s remove that from play, but that's the reason why. You have to try and risk some drones in order to make Deimos viable in the first place. Your citizen will be comfortable in that operator, though, kind of. An operator where he can just do what he wants, get his own intel, take his own gunfights, play at his own pace. Might be something he really appreciates, but also if they find intel on in one of these wayward players, maybe they'll have a shot, but of all the teams who you might find in Eric Romer, Wildcard are particularly the team that would strike me as engaging in that play style. I mean, look at the setup right here. I suppose vertical on, not, or not vertical, excuse me, Rampy on the Lucy is a little bit far away on those main stairs, and Citizen might very well find an engagement with it soon, but... Everyone is within an arm's reach of each other. You have the mezzanine player of somebody in library. The library player's got somebody on the stairs. And even the stairs guy has another guy on the stairs. There is somebody on wildcard who can trade out their teammate immediately if something needs to happen. Now, this is no house of cards from WC. This is enforced with rebar. Love how they've connected all the dots here, Carter. It's so complex for M80 to try and push their way through. There's always going to be a supporting angle here, but... As soon as I say that, we're down in this last minute. They gotta try and figure things out. This is where the gunfights matter the most. Boy, it's gonna take a lot of damage, but remember, you still have to do those Redrino surges. He's gonna get cans and all for that effort. They're not ready for Spiker, though. We'll be able to take down one. Almost two there through the smoke. He's not ready for Kino's push. Who got him down with the para? With some smokes, as well as some flames from Kino. Some lead down range, too, but it won't find the head of the player in Bar's talk. Powerful position for Wildcard to still hold, even in the 3v4. If M80 decide to execute inside of games, that could very well stop things completely, but they have a lot of control over the fireplace and top mezzanine. So a flood in the bar is not out of the cards just yet. Maybe looking for a little bit more intel, a little more comfortable of an advantage, and they will find it as Vertical falls inside the site. He's got to fall back a little bit, knows someone is fireplace, but is waiting for the push down library stairs. Make this the 3v2. On the player main lobby, and maybe you have to make a move. You've got the intel, but they need to go for the plant. Citizen cut down. There is still that bar stock player. Bosco obviously worried about the hatch. He isn't able to deny the plant. Now Rampy and Bosco, 2v2. Same duo, last alive last round. Has got to clutch it out here. Rampy's got two kills to bring this from a 4v2. Back to even. Bosco still holds that Mira inside his stock. The attack can play patiently now. They have these angles outside, and one upstairs as well. Rampy caught off guard by the player inside a connector. Bosco could maybe get that 1-1, one, one, and he does oh. smoke Noodle off that angle. But Kino's so far outside. He just has to play patient for eight more seconds, and surely Kino can do that of all things. Just hold around the corner, wait for Bosco to tap the defuse, and now he's beyond the point of no return. You know, could swing the corner and with one singular bullet put M80's first round on the board. A solid start for both of these teams, respectively. You know, I really like what we're seeing out of M80 so far. A great round there from Kiki, especially. Welcome back, Kiki. I know it's been a little while sitting on that bench, but I bet you're happy to have some kills under your banner here to start things off. Looking pretty fresh with that Capital, especially there in the uh, post. They were able to get that plant down, but M80 really highlighting their capabilities of being able to take some gunfights, trade things out into a positive scenario, and using that map control that they garnered from those to the fullest effect inside a round. Garner round two for the offense as M80 will have to try and readdress things downstairs. But I really like what we saw with that library clear, especially with Spoit trying to spearhead things in from that piano window. 
really support getting that kill is what started things off because M80 were reaching a point where they were stalling out and the crossfires from Wild Card or, or at least the ability to trade each other was very, very strong. And if you aren't able to open that up into a 5v4 with how strong that structure was from Wild Card, you could find yourself in a really difficult spot and just constantly trying for a gunfight, trying for a gunfight, and maybe not getting the opportunity. And seeing Spoit able to get that entry, obviously only one and two so far, but if we can see Spoit start to really achieve those same heights he did in Copenhagen, of course, on M80 last year, but even back when he was on Koi, just a young guy with a hot drone and a good hot drone in front of him, good gun in his hands, he can make a lot happen. And to see him back in that position and finding that success would be great for this new M80. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other great thing about it is even if Sploit doesn't get that opening entry frag, you still have so many people that can back him up as a secondary option and be able to swing through there and clean up those uh, scenarios that they're looking to try and get themselves into. How many are going to wrap themselves around Fireplace Hall? Guys, it's basement defense. We all know this one. This is going to be pretty straightforward. They're going to try and cut the map in half here. At the library entry point. They should be trying to get a drone in on this guy on the top floor as well as that one to the right. But they don't know of the library hallway player. Kind of a big deal here. They're going to try and adjust here on this angle. A nice find from cameraman. As both of them not really aware if the other was going to try and put their head in. And oh, Kansan, you stick around too long. Noodle delivers with the cog on the R4C. Easiest play Noodle's life right there. I mean, honestly, even as well, the kill on the rampy, both with two different defenders trying to take an angle with an attacker at a bit higher elevation than they were, end up losing their life as a result. Now, wild card in the disadvantage, just as they were in the previous round. This one at much greater cost, a minute 20 seconds in, and the entirety of the top four and basically the entirety of the middle four ceded to M80. They just have to go about and realize it. Wild card might be able to go for flanks, of course, but they do have those two C4s. So with that ram, if M80 are going for maybe a more fireplace, snowmobile side to take, those C4s could find quite a bit of utility onto players playing around that first floor who are trying to achieve a cali. But as it seems the attack is rotating backside, it might be a bit different. We have some options here to be able to at least break up some walls on the back end with Citizen, create some new angles and things along those lines. Also, another little notation here, just for wild card's sake, they did end up bringing a zombie, but these barriers have been changed up, folks. You can actually shoot them down now. It does take quite a few rounds, so don't get me wrong here, but you don't have to try and use any soft destruction or anything else to try and get rid of those any longer. So some old fashioned lead. Let's see what M80 wants to try and do as we are down to 45 seconds here, trying to get things open on the trench side as they obviously do already have some verticality working into this. It's more good going to step up to the plate. Spiker still had a lot of those utility pieces inside of his pocket. With those Zotos too, I mean, even if you don't want to use those on the breaches, you can even start throwing those in the doorway. I mean, you're going to have blood, and you know they're going to go through that wine single door, but you can't lose here. Maybe you let an next Kairos go, but if you're able to land a Zoto on this door as the ink floods in, you could be fine. The father's just left to his own devices, oh. doming two people from the blue doorway. I don't really care what you use the Zoto on, because Bosco is back. Wildcard retake the lead. He's just so damn good, man. It's so patient. That's the one thing that I've always noticed about Bosco's play style is that he he will just simply wait patiently for his moment to shine. But when that moment comes along, boy, will he make his presence known. Very well done there with the AUG because he's able to shut down M80 on the entry. Wildcard, once again, leaning onto the backbone of this team. And this is something that our analyst has touched on, Carter. This is something that they really didn't have in the past. They couldn't just run back to greener pastures and try and figure things out from that moment. Things would usually end up falling flat on its face. But now Wildcard, uh, they got not only a spine, but they got a bone to pick with M80 right now in this defense. They do. And I think at this point, if you were hoping Wildcard would start making a compelling argument that this rostered, I think a lot of people, especially when they were under Mirage, might have undervalued a bit that they've come to play. Chalet defenses, especially against a team with players of M80's caliber, Noodle, Spoit, Citizen, on paper, seems like a very difficult gambit. I mean, getting the lead, period, might be a wild card going into this matchup. Yet, two rounds now they've been able to pick up. Two rounds where, sure, they went in the disadvantage in round three, but still were able to fight back very convincingly. They have looked quite bit strong so far, and I mean, you gotta give it to Bosco as well in that previous round. Just some excellent plays from him in blue. And as we're starting to retread bomb sites, wild card gotta go back to familiar and fairly comfortable terror. Well, speaking of comfortable, I have Kino on the Monty here. Complete swath of shield updates as well, too, here, ladies and gents. Which has made things pretty interesting. Even for me, Carter, I hated putting shields. 
I now play shields all the time because I, you can be such a nuisance. It is so I, insane. You would not believe. I, I wanna, this is gonna make his ego go crazy. I, the way Fresh has started securing map control on shields, like, you'll be like, is this room clear? I'll be like, yeah, he just hops in a window and that room is his now. It's Monty. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 100% and it's just a, a great way to be able to handle the shields now it's a lot more accessible I would say especially with your ability to pick and choose when you actually want to expose yourself right uh, and it's honestly a great change really love what Ubisoft has done with these making the shields even more viable and uh, for some I, I know they're probably not a huge fan of that especially with uh, having to be around Monty but you'll get over it I'm sure yeah. there's traps in the game and you'll you'll find your own solution so yeah, we, we have frost mats and M80 uh, after Losing somebody to a frost mat in a 2v2 and run one, I imagine. Uh, very well acquainted with frost mats in this bomb site in particular, and also about to be very well acquainted with the unchanged but still annoying Parmonti. Just somebody full shielded, staring you in the face, beaming intel to the rest of the attack. Uh, where your position is, what you're playing. I don't know if that's what just happened with Vertical, but it's certainly what happened with Kanzen. You know, just watch the Wamai hop out of the window and dome Sploit to get that refrag. Ridiculous stuff from the Wamai. Oh, man. That's one of those situations, Carter, where somebody goes, I'm going to do something stupid. And you go, hold on. Let me do this with you. <laughs> and you just jump out balcony. Get some big kills here. Cameraman going to end up gunning down Bosco. Kanzen down as well. A good impact out. And Rampy finds a kill off of that as well. Cameraman solar? Peter? Down to half HP. Yes, cameraman in solar running around right now trying to find a new angle here. There's a couple of verticality pieces that he might be able to implement, but the same can be said by the defense. This man is solar. How, how is he here? He, he did not vault in trophy. He walked down oh, solar. And somehow, Kino has found his way into the site. This is a this is a peculiar round and a half. And I have to say, I'm here. But he downs oh. Kino through the tight angle. Rampy with the super shorty onto Citizen. This is, a, this is a TikTok round right here. This is comedy at its best. And the 1v3 has oh, man. Wildcard have found the time to revive Kanzen. Down cameraman with the diffuser inside. Oh, Boy, Sam, what do you even say about that? What do you even oh, say about that? All I gotta say it? is, uh, M80, listen, you're playing with some old heads, man. You're, you gotta expect this verticality, these little tiny angles. Carter, they don't even have the whole floor open. It is one tiny hole that is specifically implemented to make sure that it's, you can't plant behind the bomb it's, chassis. It's stuff also, like that, man. He's, he's downing Monty, too, with the shield at his back, and he's looking at maybe the tiniest pixel of his big toe to down him. Ew. Like, oh, that angle was just like Spiker, just so, uh, so heads up in that scenario because he created that in the moment. But I was more talking about the second one. But either oh, way, still, enough. the verticality working its way in in the way that it did, I don't think that M80 were exactly prepared for, especially with the info coming in on Kiki. That was the biggest piece there. If Kino's able to move that piece of the puzzle in without it being discovered, they more than likely get that case down. It's a completely different scenario. But instead, what we get is a beautiful angle found by Spiker. He gets the case down. Yeah, cameraman's able to at least collect it and try for something. But with all of that overhead pressure and the way that Wildcard had that top floor set up, it was nigh impossible for them to do anything in that moment. Honestly, even if they had an extra person, what do they do in that situation? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what they do. They uh, take a quick tech pause. They they get they get they get some stuff figured out. Say, hey, we have dropped three rounds on the attack so far, and sure, a couple of the ones we've dropped, we've been able to get the advantage. It's not like we've been completely smoked. Back in round three, we had a four v three after a couple wild card players got aggressive. That round, sure, we immediately got traded to a 4v4, but we down Kanzen, and for a good port portion of that, it was either effectively a 4v2 or a 3v2, because Kanzen was down on the floor for most of the latter half of that round. So M80 are getting advantages. The conversion, man. Getting from the middle to the end. Round four, especially, has just looked bewildering at times. It was slow before, but round four was just... I don't know what was going on, and I don't think M80 did either. Yeah, I think that was the least fundamental round we've seen so far from these two teams, you know? And honestly, that goes to show, and really just a level of respect for me, at least personally, uh, that Wildcard are willing to make things murky. They're willing to get down and dirty and into the trenches with these teams and see what exactly comes out on the other side. Uh, and the other thing is, is that they are more than capable. That is what we're finding out at the current moment. Obviously, M80, very fresh, not even any rust, just a brand new car. You got to kind of break it in, right? And M80 trying to get some things figured out. But man, Wildcard are flying in this Ferrari right now. 
especially with that individual coordination we saw last round of that double jump. Uh, just a lot of fun things Wild Carter bringing, mm -hmm. which, to be fair, on a roster again with Bosco, Rampy, Vertical, I'm like, these are some slower players, at least Bosco and Vertical. Are we going to see a whole lot of flash? But yes, indeed, we do. We'll just have to see how M80 respond. A minute into this full clear from Solar across on Labar Games defense. And Wild Card aren't changing things up all that much. Look at that structure they have. Two library players, two players on library stairs, and one player fireplace. These people know their positions, and by God, they are not moving unless they are forced. Oh, and it, even down to the little things here for Wildcard, they even barricaded the far side that they weren't going to use, guys. This is a great way to use these barricades simply for sound. Make it to where they have to try and open something up and give you that information where they're playing from. And now look, they've completely adjusted things. They know nobody's playing this balcony, so they're going to shift gears, move things inside of the library space, and try and make it more of a bunker. And so far, things are working out. What's going to go down? They won't be able to confirm that. He'll probably end up getting himself back up. But look at the these angles here from the defense. A Nitro out. Citizen will get at least Spiker here. M80 now on the top of things, at least for right now. And yes, Kiki will be able to get Spoit back up. So all things secured, at least for the most part. But I got news for you, M80 folks at home. Bosco and Rampy, they're still alive. Bosco and Rampy have just been the, the duo in the clutches throughout these first four rounds. Consistently the last couple alive. And even on the previous bar games defense, is it, well, it, even though it wasn't successful, we find ourselves Similar position again. Rampy on the library stair. Bosco over by bar inside of stock as well, but it's still a difficult spot. You know, knows he's in stock. All of the attack is aware of this. He doesn't get away with anything. Rampy's able to find one, knows somebody's likely coming from the dining position. Maybe he could find a kill here. He just sees the edge of the grim where Citizen finishes him off. M80 will get their second attack in. Quite a long time this half and are now looking to end it 3-3 if they can muster it. No strong aggression there from M80 on that top floor. Kind of bullheaded their way into that library area. But I think the biggest piece of that would most definitely be Kino on the Monty once again. Able to apply that pressure and make sure that wild card always have to have that thought in the back of their head. If King's going to try and slide that shield and take a gunfight with them. Uh, and that was even all the way down to the wire there. And we only have Bosco and Rampy alive. The whole reason that Bosco is pressured to the nth degree is because he has Kino on his door there, constantly pinging him, constantly threatening that pressure from that gunfight. Uh, and it just makes things way too convoluted for wild card. They get over aggressive on that top floor, not really able to trade out in the best way. And especially with that Monty being so healthy uh, in those dying moments, I think M80 did a fantastic job of making to where wild card really didn't have the capability to win that round. They snuffed him out there for round five. Our games has been the one site M80 have been able to get wins on so far. And as we go back down the dining, again, one where they found a lead, were able to go 4v3. One was that was still achieved by Wildcard granting M80 some openings, taking some gunfights, getting a bit aggressive. I want to see if maybe we'll see Wildcard pull back a little bit. Got the mirror set up inside a dining. I want to defend that hatch, waste some of M80's time. We barely see anybody across that top or inside of bar and games. So yeah, Wildcard changing things up a little Last round of the offense here for M80. Let's see the full swath of adjustments that they want to go for. This is going to be the second time that they've ran the Deimos. We'll have Doka be in here. I'm so surprised I haven't seen a, a partnership with Jackal just yet, but Jackal also kind of a selfish shop at the end of the day. Yeah, he does give you some solid info, but if they run something as simple as like mute or something along those lines, not too big of a deal. You can say the same for Deimos as well as we all know now. Also, one of those mute jammers and those old drones fall off of you. We'll see what M80 exactly want to do for this. The best uh, implication that I've seen of him so far, just playing some games and stuff like that, Carter, is in crunch time. Once you get down to like the last 45 seconds, you have a couple bodies oh, on the yeah. floor, Deimos is still up, and you have info on those last few players. Sending in one of those drones to try and mess with the backbone of Zyde. Oh, oh, go. Man, so amazing. I have the first one come out here. Do you end up having a mark? Amos is going to be looking for the lesion of Rampy right now. And oh, some solid gunfire. I think it was actually from Spoon yeah, as well. Used that revolver, fired a couple shots through that wall, put Rampy down to extremely low HP. But this is a setup, even though they're roaming, they're really restricting themselves on the X axis. They've got the Y opened up, couple hatches down to the middle, and then the bottom floor. They are not pushing too aggressively north, south, west, to east, just playing vertical. And after half the round gone, Spiker in a bit of a difficult position, tries to get a cheeky engagement over in West Main, but Spoit's able to shut him down. So another M80 opening will give them that. 
and you convert it. Pick on the spiker here. Wild card have done such a good job of delaying. There's only a minute remaining. M80 have so much legwork to do here. Noodle still has two of those boogie drones in his pocket. A lot of utility across the board still to be utilized here for M80. The cameraman, he doesn't have any logic bombs. M80 not exactly on the same page across the board here. They tried to use those to get that top floor cleared out, but that's exactly what Wildcard wanted. Now they're all downstairs. You don't exactly have the same read on them as you once did. And won't well, have one of Spoit's uh, on Deimos phones go the wayside there. Was tracking Rampy for just a split second, but now the shoe is most definitely on the other foot as Wildcard looking to pull ahead here with round six. That was sitting cut down. Now M80 in a really difficult position. They've still got that Ying. They've still got those candles. Maybe make this flood a little easier, but you know, spotted, split, found out. He's flashed by his own teammate. Taking that engagement behind Pillar a little more difficult. It doesn't go his way. Vertical picks up two big kills. Kino on the flood only gets one to make it a 2v2. That leaves Cameraman alone on the coverage. He can watch blue position, but he can only watch so much. Downs Rampy on the cross, so the Diffuser does go down successfully. And Bosco found out really down to the wire in those final few seconds. That made he still get it over the line. Yeah, by the skin of their teeth, they will be able to at least muster another round here and make it a 3-3 tie going into the half. Wild card, oh, it's almost able to be able to get that one done. Pull the wall over the eyes of M80, but let's be honest, it was mostly vertical there behind the pillar position. After that, Candela came in, opening the opportunity for them to try and Defenders win things, but not able to try and work their way back into the wine portion of the basement. M80, especially with cameraman implemented on that breach, the cross is just too strong for them to try and deal with. Now we're going to switch gears as Wildcard will be the ones with the offensive perspective. M80 to take things over for the defense, and they're going to send us into game and bar. Yeah, you know, uh, after really opening up that flood, fell onto the Azami in the final kill of the round, promoting himself to dock and using likely the new MP5 ACOG. Well, new, at least in terms of recent history. Yeah, new for the yeah, youngins like you. you. Yeah, well, okay, I was, I was, I was simply around when MP5 ACOG was a thing. I had this, I actually had this conversation with Nick today. I've been playing since launch. Like, I know people think I'm young, but I you have were playing, playing since you were five. I, I, I'll have you know, I was six. Thank you very much. Okay, I, had, I was starting to learn to read. Honestly, Numbers were escaping me. My ABCs were there. <laughs> I was gonna say that's yet, that's yet to be proven that you can actually read. I'll put that one out there, but uh, I, I mean, no, but yeah, I mean, it's been around a very, very, very long time. I'm happy that you actually, uh, you've been playing long enough to be able to experience all these different things across the years. I, me too. I mean, we've gone, from, we, we, we've gone from sledgehammer to death mark trackers. So uh, a lot of, <laughs> lo, lot of different gadgets we have found, but also some consistencies. Vertical on the entry with the reflex. I have been here before. I've also seen this particular strategy before. You have this dock in the corner with the fire, with the nades, to try to survive as long oh. as he can. And he just makes it out. One stim remaining. Gets him back to full. A lot of utility wasted and almost a kill on the dock found. He was even down. Still able to get himself back up. Very, very tight rope to walk. And Kino does it. Oh, M80. Needs to be dug out of that portion of library, but they still have so much positional advantage. Especially when it comes to the balcony. Blue stairs also locked up as well. Should be able to get rid of that drone pretty quickly. Kino's going to extend things over towards the piano side, especially with Noodle in tow. This is going so great so far for M80 as they're complicating things for wildcard. The drone game not solid right now for WC. And I mean, the other thing is as well as they've already used a decent bit of their, uh, you know, Info utility, so make things a little bit more complicated. On second thought, though, they do still have two logic bombs for Spiker, but they're going to make things quite hard when they don't really have too many drones to back those up. Even more used for execution time, but as we see, gunfights aren't at least starting off too well for them as they will lose vertical. Vertical's found nice little flick by Randy there. 10 and 4 at the moment, only one in the lobby with double digits. He just makes it a 4v4 as well for Wildcard. As you said, they are really struggling to acquire control. Only four drones when we have had a minute 40 left on the clock, it seemed. 
lose the opening pick. And even though they trade it back out, they're playing at M80's pace. They're able to hold on to Library as long as they want. Play on Mezzanine as long as they want. Citizen waiting for the flood in. While Spiker finds one Citizen's immediately there for the trade. Oh. And the triple as well. Gunning for the quad. He might very well have to do it. He's only got Kino to rely on in the 2v2. Oscar's able to vault in a library. So it's vertical control for the attack, but no real ability to get soft destruction. Oscar might have all 18 of his ex Kairos remaining. That lot of good that's going to do for you. And you've only got 15 seconds to win this round. He'll go for the full drop. Very quick drop down into bar, but it's only a quad for Citizen and Kino with finisher. M80, take the lead. 4 3 in favor of M80. Wild card. The high flying idea there at the last portion of the round, the X Kairos. But I mean, the dust had already settled really for that round and what was going to end up going down. And it was all due to Citizen up there on Terrace. M80 are able to delay things out for quite some time, make it where Wildcard aren't able to really hit their mark on the top floor in the way that they want to. They're not able to get off to a running start and instead Defense they go down an info game. game. I mean, yeah, like I said, they still had those logic bombs, but it honestly didn't even help them when they went to clear things out. Citizen just standing inside of Terrace gets three people, then runs inside of library, or rather, pops over the library balcony, runs back into bar. You really can't allow something like that, especially on such a pivotal position. I mean, Carter, that is such a routine area to be playing on that top floor. Wildcard just not really prepared for it in that moment. No, unfortunately, and that, I will say, you know, not to obviously, you know, I'm not saying Wildcard are going to lose the map or lose the next round, anything like that, but this is a team we're expecting to be a bit slower, to be a bit more traditional in their play style, which tends to lean a bit more on the, we go for our full clears, we use, you know, as many drones as we can to find a position, then maybe we pinch him, really we're looking to slowly acquire map control, and that's a position where if you leave a player like Citizen in a spot where he can well, maybe get one, two, three kills they can take advantage of and flip the script on you, heighten the pace, heighten the tension, and make it really difficult. So Wild Cards still have plenty of attacks to try and plenty of opportunity to retake that lead, but it is something we do need to concern ourselves with. Well, the utility that I mean, he's decided to go with here for their defense, especially having Noodle hold things over here on the library. I mean, always been a fantastic option when it comes to this area. She's able to close off a few angles that are very, very pesky, like what we're seeing right here from the library double window. Makes it to where a wild card are going to have to try and give over something, whether it be bullets or Rotero drones, we're still yet to see. But wild card still have a lot of time to be able to make that decision. Vertical's got the LMG, so it looks like it's going to be the former there. End up using that. Rotero drone coming in. Kansan going to find a home for it is... Oh. A bit of a uh, missed discussion there for just a split <laughs> second, but fortunately enough, Noodle will give one over. I was about to say, Noodle was like, oh, I can see you're struggling with that Rotero. Why don't I give you a Kiva? You know, we'll start out. I'll put the training wheels on. Now for your final two, we'll see what you can accomplish. Bosco on the Thermite has accomplished the opening pick. Spoit cut down very early on. Uh, not having the best game so far, uh, showing up in the opening duels, but unfortunately win or lose. Not just purely oh. win. Noodle's able to find a very clean trade, though, on to Kansan. Well, we just have another 4v4, but again, another round where M80 seemed to have the ability, the freedom, to force Wildcard to play their game. Well, pretty defensive-oriented chalet thus far between these two, as both teams have a very solid defensive matrix. I mean, just look at the way that Noodle is playing out this position, and I think you might be able to get another one. Fortunately enough, for Wildcard's sake, another drone rolls through, but do they want to try and commit to this top floor? Yes, he is the ISO'd player, but there's no such thing as a nade cook or anything longer. You're gonna have to look this lion right in his mouth. Noodle, looking for any opportunity here to try and open the floodgates again, but finally, they'll be able to get a kill, but it's immediately traded and Noodles only went down. Yeah, Bosco will get another one for the books here. That's really about all she wrote for this one. So Bosco does something very serious, and that would also require M80 kind of overplaying their hand as well, but you can see all of them rotating back. Cameraman kind of getting tagged up there from that long angle, so not exactly the best way to try and go, wow, but not the, you not can the four, see. 4-3 trash talk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, our Polish friend here is definitely enjoying his Brazilian teammates with all the Ks there inside of chat, but Osgo's going to work his way up to the panel. I don't want to try and swing through just yet, but Carter, this is more than likely the round. Oh, yeah. And I mean, M80 with such a solid defense here, all the angles to try and assist with things. To shut up just for a moment just to see if Bosco can get something going on Kino come on peeking. all right there we go cameraman will shut it down M80 with the round but yeah as I said M80 just such solid circumstances uh that they set up for their defensive standpoint 
and really making the most of it, especially for Noodle on that top floor. We've seen that mezzanine position twice now. It really proved to be a problem for Wild Card. First time it was going for the full clear over from Solar. This time it was a bit more of a direct take, well, direct onto this position, not a direct take at the bomb site, but a bit more of a direct focus on mezzanine from Library. And both times Wild Card have found themselves stalling out and extremely stuck in taking those positions, even though we see them able to get the opening pick. Bosco gets that 5v4, is able to find the initial bit of opening for Wild Card in the round. But then you still have Kansen running about and finding that remaining player using the utility, using the drones. Wildcard were really struggling to come up with ideas for how to do it, even though they did have good utility. They had the flashbangs, they had various primary utility as well. And yet, still, Wildcard two times now on that clear, as Noodle pointed out, have struggled to make progress. And on Chalet, on a map that really focuses on holding some different positions, maybe it's office balcony window, library window, but util clearing and then pinching from said positions, that's the name of the game for the early to mid round. And if Wildcard are struggling with that, and maybe will have a lot of room to play with on these subsequent few pieces. Yeah, most definitely. And, uh, you know, with what we could potentially see out of this basement defense, we could also see them try and get some things done on this mid floor. But when it comes to the basement, I highly doubt it. Rome clear usually pretty strong when it comes to this map. But we'll have to see. I mean, not exactly with the most options either. So more than likely going to be the ladder. So probably stick downstairs and try and hold on to things. We love that we have implemented Fenrir. So we already saw him get away with some solid utility placement earlier from Wild Card. Does that mean he tried to clear out that top floor? Ended up blinding one of the players as they hop through Eco Balcony. Uh, but now be able to use, oh, well, Maybe I spoke too soon, right? <laughs> that does happen sometimes, but we didn't exactly see all these people end up leaving site so early. But I honestly love this from M80. A very late setup on this top floor makes for wild card if they didn't exactly have the drones in solid positions. They could end up getting completely blown away by M80's top floor setup. Oh, Not the go. bunker buster from Solar Window. Oh, it's found Bosco no! down below. Thermite cut down, blown sky high. Rampy sees it sail by his head and there's not much he can do to stop what's coming 5v3 as that wasn't even the first pick the first was on the spiker brutal start for wild card is not even 20 seconds into the game 5v3 i mean what do you even do from there how do you recover you're just entering trophy because m80 have given it to you because they know it's a 5v3 they know a slow team and a 5v3 is going to be even slower than they were before such a smart idea here from M80. Beautiful call there. Or the cameraman or whoever on M80 that was like, hey, let's try and push the aggression and see if we can get something cheeky going on here. That nitro cell lineup from Noodle. I'm stealing that immediately. Uh, <laughs> that is going in the piggy bank, boys and girls. So if you if you see me on Chalet, better watch the hell out. I swear. You see those Solarium windows open. It's coming for you. That is Stokes' territory now. <laughs> They're gonna call it Stokes window before you even know it. Uh, no, we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll come up with a noodle, noodle seance there for him. But either way, beautiful stuff out of M80. And as you said, putting Wildcard on the back foot, they've already been super, super slow. And just what a way to exploit them here in round nine. I mean, this is, this is sort of the problem for Wildcard is like, I mean, 5v3, listen. What I'm about to say, I understand they're in a difficult spot. I understand in a 3v5 when all of MED have rotated back, there's not a lot of gaps you can exploit. There's not a lot of defenders you can take an isolated one on. But their only option is just to go for a wine take. Just Selma open the wine wall. Don't even have the trench wall necessarily up, up the boiler wall or the red wall. I've been playing with so many EU people and the callouts there, they just get jibbled so quickly. Whatever you call that wall, that's not even open up. Wildcard are trying to basically flood and play structured into every angle held by the defense. And I do like this. They go for the smokes, they get the drop, and Rampy's actually found his way in. So a good entrance from Wildcard. We'll see how M80 reacts. Vertical's got the counter, but not the oh! swing. He looks up at the hatch. He fears a retake. That is simply not coming. He had it. He had the angle to save him. And the nervousness, the second guessing, it gives M80 match point. The voice of the hatch was just too strong. Literally. It was whispering sweet like the green goblin to mask. Him. He's like, he's stuck. He's, like, he's, he's rotating. He's rotating. <laughs> nope. No, he's not. It's not. And, uh, I mean, it happens to the best of us, Carter. Listen, it's, it's funny because, you know, Lax was saying that he was just getting back into the game as well. And, listen, I've been doing the same. I only had, like, one good game for, like, 
the, the like first week and it was literally when i was streaming with lax it was on skyscraper i had like 13 kills right that's that terrible dude i am so unbelievably washed it is insane but i digress it, like these moments like this are are so so very annoying when it comes to siege man i mean you, you think you you hear something there's just something in the back of your head that's speaking to you saying oh there's got to be a flank that happens here right there's no way they have so many bodies up m80 had to send somebody to the mid floor that's not the case everybody sticks downstairs and not only that but you lose to the oldest trick in the book an m590 swinging off a pillar takes out two people and ends the round insane stuff there for m80 is practically a flawless round in my book there for that previous round to get them onto an ultimate point i mean basically it might it might as well have been i mm -hmm. mean we we you, when you have a beginning like that and you have an end like that even though wildcard had a good read you drop down the hatch cut down the smokes or put down the smokes go into the plant i like that idea i actually think from a team that was going very slowly it's a good read it doesn't end up mattering you have that flawless round m80 now on match point you have to win three attacks in a row and you haven't even been able to muster one so far we'll see spiker try to stake that on a change of pace a quick move up the west main stairs to look through these dining feed holes there is one player on the rope spiker could very well hunt him off if wildcard get intel that noodle is in fact top solar he's just started retreating we'll see what vertical is able to find now, if you have the castle and so on this top floor wildcard have more than enough utility to be able to handle a position like this especially with spiker able to add that extra spice once they do end up going for the clear on this top floor i have to hope that they're able to get this in good time and work these angles in a timely manner as well we have seen that kind of rye obviously just in the last round so that'd be something just to worry about at the end of the day oh the timing i mean you speak about it and it just shows his ugly head immediately doesn't it noodle's gonna get gunned down kunai in hand yet another one here will fall but it's gonna be to the side of the blue this time around spoik able to take down rampy this little trade back and forth here. We'll have a couple players on this top floor as Kino to try and stand guard at Piano. If you think we're starting to see what some of us were worried about, even with that kill on the noodle, M80 might have had problems in their attack, but the oh. guns are coming alive. But the same could be said for Wildcard. Kanzen finds three this round. Spiker gets one as well. But Kanzen with the triple put Cameraman in the 1v4. I mean, I suppose there is a very famous cameraman one before at this point, but at least there, there was a bit of slow time, just as we do now. But it was a team making mistakes, a team getting ahead of themselves. And wildcard, you can say many, many things, but a team that sends things in too quickly, they are not. Wildcard take their first attack. They still have two to go before they make OT. A very strong showing there. Able to be able to pick up that round, exploiting the top hold there from M80 in a, a pretty solid but very straightforward way at the end of the day. You know, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel when it comes to that clear either. So, hey, for all intents and purposes, able to at least get another one over the line before we end up seeing a potential M80 victory here rolling around on round 11. Is they're going to be going to kitchen and dining and have a better understanding of the way that Wildcard want to try and go about these clearances. And the one thing that stood out to us, Carter, is definitely their timing. Even in a round like that, where things are traded out so heavily into their favor, they're still, still more than willing to just await the arrival of the defense, see what they potentially want to do. Don't want to try and over-aggress and uh, potentially give them a way back into these rounds. So expect that, especially coming into this next one as wild card. Well, there for a split second, we're looking to implement some other things, but I think that they thought it was going to be a different bomb site, especially with this huge line shift that we're seeing. No go could be going to be brought to try and assist on that clear, but we are going to have Vert on the Finca. Who could make for some solid gunfights. You still also see some big adjustments. I mean, you have dining defense, but you got a rotate hole made in the office wall, and I believe all reinforcements used now, so there will actually be an ability or wild card at an angle into that top floor when they go for not even necessarily the full clear but maybe the half clear try and get that top floor control stop anybody from retaking then open the dining wall below part of it's opened up so the double hard breach that we saw wild card switch to the thermite and the selmas is actually less opportunities for them to sometimes or maybe go for those open all this extension here from m80 Forcing wild card to respect every portion of the map, every square foot. 
and some M80 body watching over it. All the way back up to our favorite and most hotly contested area of the whole map here, Carter. Give me that library balcony once again. Gonna hold things down on mezzanine. This one gonna be downstairs with those cam, cam traps as well. So many solid pieces here from M80 that could really slow things down, especially when it comes to crunch time. If they're able to delay these first two minutes, be extremely difficult for Wildcard. Try and get it back to their favor. After losing Rambi on his highlight operator and vertical goes down too. This is getting overly complicated, but Kansan and Bosco. Oh, are we back? M80, they line him up and Wildcard, they knock him out of the park. I, I was not aware wild card were back in this i uh i was, I was like your oh, game I'm i was so not unbelievably sorry uh I, that, that was absolutely disgusting especially from kansan but what else can we expect after this, that crime scene we saw what is it two years ago now on consulate and absolute menace when he gets his moment it's gonna be a huge double kill we might look back on here in the post round I mean, I mean, I'm I'm looking at back on it right now. <laughs> I mean, a huge, huge double kill, 3K for team overall to make it a 3v2. Sam, I, I'm actually not looking at anything else but that at the moment because it's put Kino and Sploit in a very difficult spot. You can call them a, a new M80 duo or whatever, but certainly two of the uh, surviving M80 players from last year. Only one surviving in this round, that's for damn sure. And what are they gonna what are they going to accomplish? You have one playing aggressively on the bathroom window. He's been spotted. So he knows he can't just give this position away for free. If he does, Wildcard can flood in. So he'll fall back down. Remember, the bomb site is dining. If it does leave Kino up above. Maybe Sploit can go for that C4. Rotero forces Kino out, but just into an engagement with Bosco sprinting into his open arms. He's looking for the second, can't find it. Hands in on a heater this attacking half. 3K into another. What can he find in the 1v2? He's very low HP, and Sploit's able to spot him. With 15 seconds left, Spiker barely has time to go for the res. If he wants to, he'll be down to only eight seconds remaining when they go in for this flood. This should be such an easy layup for Sploit. He might be oh! found, but he finds the C4-2. Oh! The hip fire ADS! 1v2 for the boy Wonder M80. Take the first W of the North America League. Incredible antics out of M80, but let's be real. Specifically, Sploit right there. That pre-placed Nitro cell. He doesn't just shoot, folks. He walks the walk as well. The knowledge inside of that brain, truly powerful. As he'll be able to sneak that one away from Wildcard. You said it before we went to Chalet, Carter. M80, not a great record on this map, but they no. start off right here in stage one of 2024. Yes, and of course, you know, different roster that had that not great record on Chalet. Very, you know, overall, very different. But we were, you know, a little worried going into the second half. We see some good performances from Wildcard. I'm thinking, oh, Rampy, you said, you said you might surprise us. Are you? Are you going to surprise us? Am I going to be sitting here thinking, I was a fool for picking M80? But then once we get to that defensive half, when you have a team as talented as M80, Sam, I mean, Citizen, Spoit, even Cameraman can have his moments. Those are gunners that you just can't simply let have the map control they want. And unfortunately, that's a lot of what Wildcard did. Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny that you also bring up Hammerman there at the tail end of that as well, because he silently got like almost double digit kills. He had like nine or 10 frags inside of that game. And you you honestly didn't even notice because there was so much other action happening amongst these M80 players that he was able to just do his job and flex things around, play the important operators that he saw to try and fill those gaps. I, I think honestly, M80 really have something solid on their hands right here. I think they do as well. Will they be able to make something truly work? Will Wildcard maybe be a little bit of a roster that we can be excited about? Will they end up making a lot of the old heads like Sam? Not like me, of course, as I'm only four years old, but like Sam really excited? Sure, it's possible, but we'll have to see if it's a bit longer than a best of one. Of course, we will have a short break. So before we get back to the desk, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. done and dusted it's already happened and in the blink of an eye m80 have shown that they have what it takes with a brand new team straight out the gate wild card better luck next time you'll have to wait till next week to actually have another opportunity but for m80 that's probably the best possible debut they could have hoped to have with a new team coming from all over the world to the nal for the first time i'm jacob he's lax he's fox that was a good one that was a really good shot like game yeah i mean for the first games coming out the gates i mean that first half it went three three i mean specifically want to talk about wild card it kind of went into what i said of you know bringing bosco on is going to allow their 
defensive setups to be a lot more stationary, a lot more reserved sort of play style. And you would see Vert, you would see Rampy and Kansan playing up a little closer and doing that fallback, which that's exactly what we saw. But then it switched sides, and that's when we saw everything kind of flip on its head. Yeah, there was a lot that's gone. I know at the half, I specifically told you guys backstage, I was like, we're not seeing much adaptation when things go wrong for wildcard. If things aren't going their way, they still stick to the status quo and keep doing this slow, methodical, almost, you know, like you've seen it before, like on an old SSG team, the way that they just tried to slow out the other team. And there was a big worry about once they got to attack, are they gonna be able to get aggressive enough, get into these openings? Because M80, obviously, they're not just gonna slow down and, and stop. They're, they were making amazing adaptations, reading into exactly what Wildcard was doing and constantly moving. So it was so difficult to keep a pinpoint on them. And I just didn't see Wildcard try to respond fast enough to those things. It felt like Wildcard maybe had some momentum toward the end. They got one round on attack, but only after M80 went to match point. And then this final round almost felt like we could see Spoit die and suddenly we need a round 11. It never ended up getting to that point. So did they figure it out and it was just too late? I think Wildcard had a really good game plan going in, but obviously M80 was just so hard at keeping them down. And so even though some of the rounds look like Wildcard were in the driver's seat, especially that last round, they used so much of their time clearing out the rest of the roamers from M80 that when you put big players in big positions like that, Spoit just ended up winning it on that last round because the time. Yeah, and I think even in that round seven, they even talked about that specifically, was when, sorry, something just fell back there. Um, was more so the fact, I mean, Noodle even said it, KKK, nice try, <laughs> like you guys didn't yeah, even yeah. have a chance to, you know, cl nice clear, and it goes into with what Fox was saying is, it looked like M80 had the plan of what they really wanted to do, and they were spearheading that, where wildcard on those attacks, they would slow down. They weren't having that same success that M80 had. And again, Fox said it perfectly, is M80 was keeping that pressure that just simply was not allowing wildcard a lot of room or wiggle room to move around. So because M80 came in as a brand new core, we didn't know if it was gonna gel right off the rip, and it seemed like it did. Did we notice communication problems? Maybe some execute didn't go right? We saw Cameraman clutch up one round to it felt like everybody worked as a pretty good machine in that game. I mean, M80 looked, again, like they knew exactly what they wanted to do, whatever their strats were throughout, you know, this, throughout this league getting started. Like it looked like they had the plan that was perfectly executed. Looking at the wild card side, what really confused me, and this could just be because this Kiba barrier placement just this, well, this update just happened. We weren't seeing those Kiba barriers shot out right away. They were still using explosives. They're using Flores drones. Yeah, yeah. And it was really making, it was frustrating me, but like I get it because you're so used to not being on the Shakiba barrier yep. that now you like are stuck in this way of like, all right, I got to waste util on it. Whereas I feel in some of those instances, that's what was slowing wild card down. Whereas if they were actually able to identify that you could get rid of those Kiba barriers, just simply as shooting them, yeah. that it would have sped up the process in some of those rounds specifically. It's just one of those things that you have to train yourself to be comfortable with doing that sort of thing because it's a brand new patch. You need to make sure that that habit is just instilled in your blood at some point. Everything else, though, seemed like it worked out really well for M80. For Wildcard, still some redeemable qualities. Again, Bosco had a really good game. So it's not like we have to like forgive him. Oh, he has some rust. He clearly didn't show any rust, but everyone else feels like they have to wake up a little bit more. Not at all. He came in firing on all cylinders, him and Rampy specifically. But more importantly, M80, their responses with the way that they were adapting every single situation, not only in the game, but with the operators they were bringing. I really love the different looks. Obviously, they brought Deimos, they brought the Monty. You know, we saw the Kino on Monty, <laughs> so I mean, we got scared a little bit, but seeing that level of just adaptation round to round, that's what you need to see out of, you know, big teams on these stages. And yeah. I just don't think we saw enough out of Wildcard, but there was a lot of good promise coming from them. But M80 was the one I wanted to highlight on that adaptation. As a general point, I think we only saw Deimos played twice. twice. And it was only by M80, so... To be fair, I'm, I don't think they used the death mark in one of the rounds. Which yeah. Was, <laughs> one of them, one of them either. Which, which would have been a perfect mark, round but... to use it. It would have went into exactly what I said, as those mid to late rounds. Like, it would have been perfect. I don't think... I think Citizen got a little too focused on what was going on or was focusing on comms that he wasn't able to use it. But then we did see Spoit use it. And still, like, it wasn't used to its best ability, in my opinion. But... Nonetheless, it's exciting to see a brand new operator be introduced into the pro league and, and see how the pros are using it. It's only game one at this point, yeah, too. Of so course. maybe and we'll see it even more. Definitely. I think so.
Hopefully. Hopefully we do. And let's talk about Cameraman because the IGL from M80 needs to be highlighted by himself. He had a crazy post-plant clutch covering for a plant downstairs, and it felt like if there was any direction and he's the primary one focusing on making sure everyone goes where they're supposed to go, I felt like he was doing a really good job calling. Yeah, I mean, the round was hectic in and itself specifically. And Cameraman, this was such a huge heads up right here that he instantly flicks over and downs the guy over in the closet in that connector and then switches back and grabs this guy to clear the round or to at least cover, give that coverage right there. That right, right there specifically is what I was talking about. Like that was such a heads up from Cameraman because if he didn't look over there in that five second window, that easily then is a round that falls in wild card's favor. And that's just a heads up play that Cameraman can bring in just the experience overall. Yeah, yeah, the player from Connector easily could have ran by. So just knowing your timings, I mean, that's a level of experience yep. that you only get from playing so much, from understanding the position that you were in. Not only was he able to perform that well, but he was also the main caller calling all of these adaptations. And I mean, when you yep. have the leadership like him, we highlighted him beforehand about needing to be that glue. And he clearly was. Obviously, that round was a big round specifically, but him just calling all of the, the micro adaptations, I mean, it was just a really well-rounded just for me. And, and it feeds into what Fox was saying already, of just being the glue and being that IGL and setting the round expectations and adaptations. Like, that's what Cameraman is going to be doing. And you know that from an IGL standpoint. You are the one that is setting up those rounds, those mid to late rounds, and how it's going to properly be executed. And then it's just on the team to get it done. So what are we looking for for Wildcard going into their next game? They're going to have a week in order to, to go, go back to the well, figure out what the problems were in this game. Four rounds is still great, but most of those came on defense, and the attack was where the struggle came in. Is that the primary thing Meep is going to focus on with these guys? I think the map obviously played a huge part into their attack struggles. It is a very attack-sided map, and the players that are on the roster are slower-tempoed players. So when they got to the attack, it's like, who are you expecting to make these crazy plays that maybe somebody on M80 would make? Obviously, you look to Vert. A lot of their strategy and the game plan that they had was very methodical in the way that they were trying to clear people out of these corners before they got into the map. But M80 was ready for that. They had a lot of different vertical angles, a lot of different positions where they would try to bait somebody in one position. Usually it was Noodle that was getting baited in a position, and then they would set up crossfires on it. And Wildcard wasn't able to understand that or recognize that and be able to respond to that fast enough. And they weren't brute forcing it. Their utility wasn't able to clear them out. We saw Kino get away with his life as a yeah, dog. That was, yeah, that was through crazy. the fire. Was sliver him So out. they're just barely scraping by away, and there's nobody on Wildcard that's responding that fast. So I want to see just the level of adaptability. I keep saying that word, and I, it's I important. hate to say it, it's but important. it is important. I want to see the changing, the level changing, and dy the dynamics from them. Well, let's see directly from the horse's mouth how this game went. On the first game with M80's full set new roster from all over the world, we got Kino on the line to see how this went behind the scenes because I think we need to hear from them whether this team is actually gelling as well as they did or if they have a whole bunch of different mistakes that they have to sort out. So let's see if we can get Kino in here and he'll explain if it was a good game or if it was something that can still be improved. Do you, can you hear me? Um, I can't hear anything. Hello? Kino! I have a feeling. Kino. My boy! I'm supposed to listen to you guys right now. Can you hear me yet? <laughs> oh, man. Maybe He's one so of these cute. days we'll get him He's back so in. so sweet, man. I love <laughs> you <Kino>. guys. <laughs> you mean, you, you both played with him before, um, so... I I have. We'll, we'll have to see if we can't get him on live in just a second. We don't like him. We don't need him anyways. You specifically asked for Kino. You wanted him in I know, but just seeing him there, we don't need him anymore. That answered my question. <laughs> He's smiling. He's happy. He's The Kino. question about Monty, all you had to do was look at him, and you're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I, I had a really interesting question. I really wanted to know if it was just cameraman that was making these operator changes and calls, calling out the demos, calling out the Monty, the Capital. I really wanted to know if it was cameraman specifically or anybody else that was just, if you saw an opportunity, they made the call and then they would make the play. If, I want to know a little more about the inner workings. All right, well, let's ask him direct because I think he can actually hear us now. Leo, are you there? Yeah, no. Kino. Guys, I can't hear it. No! Guys. Oh, man. I just had a simple question. No. Like, why is he on Monty? No. He found Fox himself Lex. off the team because Jacob. of Monty, and now he can't. Now he's no. on it again. I'm sorry, buddy. We'll get this figured out at some point. Nope. He really wants. I, I, I wonder if he had his. I wonder if he had his chalky. Actually, in that intro, I think of him joining back on the team. I think he uh, shows. Oh, the chalky he loves note. the chalky. <laughs> note. You know, we loves don't need to reference. That. Nah, he you gotta re note. No, you 100. percent That not is on stream. You can do it on Twitter. We just can't do it here. Why? Because you know it was in that video. Well, I'm not talking about the rest of that video. I'm just talking about the Chalky Milk specifically. Like, that is like a oh. Kino 
setup. <laughs> Did it take you a second to remember that? Yeah, I was that like, it's no, I, I am specifically talking about the chocolate milk because that is a routine. That is normal for Kino. Let's try this one more time. Kino, can you hear me? I can. There we go. <laughs> Good stuff, hey, buddy. Congrats on the dub. I want to ask first off, brand new team from literally everywhere. How much time have you guys had to scrim? Um, we had about two weeks. We had one week where three of my teammates were across the world. So it was kind of hectic week. They had like high ping and whatever, but yeah, yeah like overall, like two weeks. Fox? Kino, Kino. Hi, I have Fox. a very important question. Keep it, keep it really honest with me. I know you guys don't want to give away don't too much. Don't talk about the naked picture. Whoa. Whoa. We didn't say that. Whoa. Whoa. No, I was going to say, we saw a lot of different looks at you guys, a lot of different operators being brought. We saw the demos. We saw you on Monty. We saw Capital. We saw a lot. And I want to know, is it cameraman that's making those calls, or are you guys playing more on a fundamental, whoever sees the opportunity or sees the goal? Are they pre-strat pre before, or are you guys seeing it in the moment and adapting? Uh, I would say it's a mix of both, really. We have uh, like fundamentals, we have uh, shrats, we have like the de defaults, but it's also in the moment, he has some really good calls, some really good reads. So it, it just depends. One of the one of the Monty rounds, it was on the fly. So now, we ball. I know you're talking about the Monty rounds are on the fly. <laughs> was that your decision or was that Cameraman's decision to put you back on Monty? Listen, if it was my choice, I would never play Monty again <laughs> after what happened. Listen to me. Do you get flashbacks when you uh, have to pick Monty as the rounds like trauma? Roll in? <laughs> Good trauma. Grief. Well, that was my only question. Fox had the more in depth. I had to just ask. So, so now we know if we ever see Kino on Monty again, it's not because he wanted to be there in the first place. Just know Kino's going through it in that prep phase. I am. Uh, I'm being forced. I'll ask a slightly more boring question. Actually, for you, it might not be. When this team came together, not very much time to get everybody situated. You were you were supposed to have a completely different opponent yesterday. Your first opponent ends up being wild card, a good team on their own. But how did this game go because the team is so new? Did it exceed your expectations for how well it went, or are you just gonna go through and pick apart all the errors? Oh yeah, well we knew Charlie was a really good map of theirs, but we still we were really confident in it, so we decided to just just go with it. We had some stuff prepped uh, to play against them. So I think we were very confident. We, we started very slow, kind of nervous, new team, comms a little hectic, but uh, we ended up picking up and uh, brought, it, brought it back. All right, well, dude, is there anything else you want to say before we let you go? <coughs> Skins. <laughs> we don't have one. Well, Dang! That's true. You have a spoil charm, though. Should we just go sub to him? I have, a, I have an Amity chain, if that counts. Oh, is that available? Nice. Can we buy that? You can buy that. Mm. Might have to do that and get him in studio. Get the spoil charm, <laughs> my boy. We'll be sure to do that, dude. Kino, again, congratulations on the win, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Jacob. Thanks, Fox Lax. Bye, buddy. Always good to talk to the boy. And it's good for M80 to finally have some experience figuring out what this five stack was going to look like. Commiserations to Wildcard, but everyone's back next week in a round robin and best ones to do it all over again. We'll be right back with game two after a very short break, so don't go anywhere.